Hey, what's up? Welcome to part two of the orchestration. All right, so now we're going to be orchestrating the main melody. So first of all, I've just gone ahead and put the main melody on all six horns. Um, Range-wise, everything works out quite well. You know, that high C up here it is really great, especially with the whole section going. That's, you know, pretty much a high peak note. They can go higher, but that's a, a good, high, pow powerful note. Um, but the ending, of course, it goes, you know, um, bum, bum. Um, that's uh, too high for a French horn. Um, you know, they could play it in real life, but again, it's going to be a little bit more pinched. It's going to be really fishy intonation-wise, and it's just not a very reliable note. So I'm going to try to be a good orchestrator here and uh, give that note to the trumpets um, for the very ending. Because they're better suited for it. Um, and I brought the, the dynamic level of the horns, we started out at double F, and then I put th all six horns, um, they sort of migrate into a counter line um, while the trumpets pick up that melody. That way it sounds like the melody is being finished with the trumpets. So um, I'll just go ahead and play it. It's literally, there's no accompaniment at this point. <laughs> All right, so the horns literally just went into this uh, counter melody. Um, um, dum bum 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 or dum bum bum. So they started out, I mean, in unison, and then they split off to two parts, and then finally, and three parts. So it's just the horns. Bum 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 bum. All right, and then the melody, of course, is going to go after that into the. You know, the tubas and the bass trombones and all that delicious low stuff. But uh, now we're going to go ahead and add some percussion and accompanimental stuff in the background. So I will see you in a minute. Alrighty then. So, um, I didn't add any percussion yet, but I tried to write a decent bass line um, to go along with uh, our melody, as well as a couple of accompanimental things. And there, it's enough that I, I think I should show you before moving on. So first off, I'm just going to show you the bass line. So um, two things that I tried to do. One, I tried to make it, you know, of course, melodic, melodically active, especially for the parts where the melody is stagnant. For example, like boom, ba 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 bum 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 bum. For that first measure, the melody is really active, and I want to kind of stay out of the way and let it shine. But then when it goes bum bum bum, that's such a simple contour, dun dun dun, that I kind of took those little empty spots or simpler spots of the melody and. Uh, took that as an opportunity to do some more melodic stuff with the bass line um, because it would stand out, you know, they're kind of giving room for each other to speak, so to speak. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to play the bass line by itself and you can sort of hear how it sounds. And additionally, um, rhythmically, I use the contrapuntal technique of making the rhythm as different from the melody as possible. When the melody is rhythmically active, just make the bass like quarter notes. And when the melody isn't rhythmically active, then make, you know, the bass rhythmic active and the Star Wars theme is a perfect you know, example of this it's like bum 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 if you listen to the accompaniment of Star Wars um the background chord hits doom bum 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 it's it's basically every spot that the melody doesn't hit um the uh, the background stuff hits and it's a really useful technique for get, giving yourself a full sound that doesn't sound too busy because everything is giving room for itself to speak. So I'll just play the bass line. Alright, so um, uh, so that combined with the uh, melody, and I also, I just took that and went ahead and doubled it on the bassoons. Um, I didn't go with the contra bassoon because, you know, this isn't a climax or anything, this is just the first statement of the melody, so I don't want it to be too heavy. Um, so I'll go ahead and play that along with the, uh, French horns and, uh, trumpets. That way you can sort of hear how that sounds with the melody. <laughs> So now, uh, another thing that I did was I, we needed more harmonic stuff in the background, so I went ahead and added a little viola, you know, Danny Elfman type thing that I used in Guatemala, I like using it a lot because it's very useful. Um, 
it just is, it has a nice sound to it. Um, I, although, even though Danny Elfman uses it all the time, like in Alice in Wonderland and uh, Willy Wonka, but I think it actually started from John Williams' Flight to Neverland, you know, with the oboes. Anyway, so yeah, so I just did that in the violas. Right, um, kind of gave it some nice, decent melodic interest, even though it's an ostinato. You know, you, you can hear it's like da ba 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 ba, just so that they're not bored out of their minds with their part. Um, yeah, um, I took the melody and doubled it with the second violins. Do you know, same octave that the horns are in, um, to give it a nice throaty sound and help its the melody stand out. Um, and then I had the. Uh, Violins one come in at the end for the finish an octave higher, like that. So yeah. So the only other thing that I did was I took that bass line, the rhythm of the bass line, and fleshed it out with some harmony in the trombones. Um, and I changed a little bit of the rhythm, but you'll you'll hear how it how it uh, how it sounds. And just so you know, to, so that it doesn't sound so empty, I filled in the harmony with trombones. Is a nice little counter line that goes well along well with the horns, um, and it's what the bass line is doing too. So, so it's a nice little um, you know counter line there. So that in combination with just the bass instruments, so you can see how the, how they fit together, but also how they're different. We'll go with this, and let me uh, go ahead and do the bassoons as well, and then I'll show you what all of it sounds like together. Oh goodness me! Stupid Siberius being when your funny business. Okay, there we go. There we go. I'm trying to get a good view for you, sorry. Okay. So still need to add percussion and maybe some wind runs and stuff, but this is what all it sounds like together so far. Awesome sauce. So some nice cymbal hits and maybe a snare drum to drive the rhythm and some wind stuff, and we should be good to move on to the next section. See you then. Alrighty then. Okay, so I have had a lot <coughs> of fun. Ha hi hu ha. So, um, let's. I've I have, <laughs> I've changed and adjusted so much. Let's let's start with the winds. So I added some runs here. Uh, little things like and I split them off to parts, and then I put them back together. Um, and then at the end they have a little counter melody. So I'll just play what the winds are doing by themselves. So you can sort of hear and imagine the other melody in your head. Remember, boom, 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 boom. Oops, sorry for bumping the camera. Here, so you can listen to just the winds. <laughs> So I have a nice little thing there. I took that viola thing that we had, and I doubled it with the clarinets, like I usually do. Um, I'll play that by itself. With a little breathing room. There you go. So... I probably should actually, now that I think about it, give them a little bit more breathing room. It doesn't really matter since writing for samples, but I always try to be realistic, so let me go ahead and add that right there. Let's see, down there. And I also, some sections where the, uh, the viola went up to the, um, what would normally be the, I'm going to butcher this, chalmo, calmo, calmo, kaba, haba, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's the middle range of the clarinets where the break is, it's not very resonant sounding. Um, so I 
adjusted the part writing ever so slightly to stay in the really nice heavy range of the clarinet to both make it easier for them to play as well as um, uh, make it louder and more resonant because that's what we want for this delicious section. So yeah, I actually didn't go as crazy with the percussion. I started off with a gong because I li I didn't I, I like the sound of you know boom 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 because with the cymbal if if I added the cymbal at the beginning it it sort of blocked out the melody and I wanted you to be able to hear the boom 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 because that first note on the horns boom is not necessarily um, the loudest um, uh, note because it's a little bit down there um, just in the context of everything that's going on. So yeah, um, I. Uh, Gave the trumpets some of the runs that the upper ones were doing, like ba da ba da bum bum bum, ba da ba da bum bum bum. Uh, I'll play just the trumpet section by itself so you can see what's going on there. Boom, 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 boom. Alright, so a nice little push there at the end. So yeah, but bum 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 bum, and that's kind of a thing I sort of stole from How to Train Your Dragon. Um, remember do da 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 boom bum 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 He does a lot of those things where the this the it hits it um syncopated from the melody like boom bum 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 things like that. It's it's used commonly in marching band stuff, so I did a little bit of that, and then it goes to the melody, you know, boom. And that high C is an, a nice, a nice trumpet full section can hit that at fortissimo, no problem. Um, professional trumpet section that is, and then it goes down an octave to finish it, boom, because it wouldn't be able to go up to that E flat unless you're like a jazz trumpeter, and then it would sound a little squeaky. So it went down there, but it's okay because the strings went up the octave. Um, so still give it that full sound. I also doubled more the melody because when I started doing other things, it, it sort of overshadowed the horns a little bit. So I decided to double more the melody. So I'll just play what the string section is doing, um, so you can hear it. Right, and a little typical, you know, counter melody. I also took the uh, the low bass line and doubled it with the piano, which is really nice. Gives it a nice full octavey, delicious sound. Combined with everything, uh, it sounds really nice. Um, gives the bass a lot of a lot of rhythmic clarity. I love doubling the piano, the low piano with the basses and cellos. So gives a nice little fidelity there. All right, so yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it. I did add percussion. Again, like I said, I, I tried to use it a little bit tastefully. Um, the percussion serves different parts. For example, the uh, sometimes it goes with what the accompaniment is doing, sometimes it goes with the melody, and sometimes it does the little runs. Like, ba -da -ba -da -bum -bum -bum, you know, I snare drum doubles what the trumpets do, ba -da -ba -da -bum -bum -bum, things like that. I try not to overuse the cymbals and save them for the big push at the end. Uh, I did use the gong at the beginning. Um, so, yeah. Um, let me play just the brass section by itself, so you can hear what's going on here. Uh, and I also took, I added the tubas and bass trombones at the end um, to um, uh, to reinforce the bass section. <laughs> had it going to a major um, chord, and bum, 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 but I wanted it to go to minor because it shouldn't resolve itself so quickly, and it's going to be a little bit awkward when I'm uh, <clears throat> when, uh, doing, uh, what am I saying, uh, when it goes to the next section, which goes back to C minor. So now I'll just play the winds by themselves, including the clarinets and the contrabassoon, so you can just hear. <laughs> All on registers that can be heard in the study section. So um, now I'm just going to play the percussion section, including the piano, um, and then I will show you what the whole thing sounds like. Scoot back over here. There we go. So.
spectrum band stuff going on. My apologies, I restarted. All right, so now we can hear what all of it sounds like together. So I'm nice and happy with it. And again, it's really busy and full, but it's okay because it's the first, you know, time the melody is in their face. You want it to be really full. My apologies for the uh, video cutting out. My camera ran out of space. Anyway, as I was saying, um, it's okay to be big and full for this first section because I'm going to have a really simplified section right after this where the melody is repeated in the low bass. You know, boom, 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 but with literally just bass drum, timpani, everyone on the tonic. Just, just you know, a really um, empty sort of heavy section. So it's, 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 it'll be a nice contrast for this. And like I said, you know, I'm thinking of this as sort of like a main menu game for, you know, a game, you know, something that you're just going to hear once or not necessarily repeat a lot. So it's, it's, a, it, we want, we want it to be splashy. Anyway, so yeah, um, now I'm gonna, just going to play the whole thing from the very beginning, and you can hear how it sounds, and then I will, I will see you um, in the next video where we orchestrate the next section. So I'm pretty happy with how that uh, turned out. Everyone gets a nice part. Everything um, seems to be fairly balanced. And plus, it'll sound a lot better, um, especially the horns. The horns are going to cut a lot more um, in my uh, in the final mix with my um, with Cine samples, just because the tone of real players is so fantastic. Because you get that quivery, whereas the note performer has a more noble um, sound, a more rounded sound to the to the horns. Um, um, whereas you know players. The film score players are used to adding that extra buzz to the sound, um, so they're definitely going to cut more in the beginning. But other than that, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So let's uh, uh, move on to the next section. See you then.